Hi, Luann here. I'm opening our sample event from the dashboard to show you the layout of every stem. Let's get you familiar with the functionality and buttons you'll be using to power your profitability with this awesome software. It's really simple, I promise. At the top left of the screen, you have your action buttons. Save, export, edit labor fee, add page. These are the buttons you'll use to build your recipes and orders. Below the action buttons, you'll see the pages of your event. You can think of these pages like the pages in a notebook or the tabs on a browser. The default pages are set up for a wedding order. The first tab you see is personals for bouquets and boutonnieres. The next for ceremony flowers, including altar arrangements and aisle markers. The third page is for reception flowers, like centerpieces and cake flowers. Of course, these pages are easily customizable for daily deliveries, corporate events, holiday orders, subscriptions, or any other type of floral design order you need to price out and order flowers for. The pages can be removed or renamed, and you can easily add more pages. The action buttons allow you to add, remove, and rename pages. They also allow you to add columns for your recipes, add and create new items, and each of these buttons has its own tutorial. I highly recommend you watch those next. Let's identify the name of the page we're currently on. We are on the reception page. You'll see it's clearly displayed at the header in the top of the screen, and the reception page tab is also a darker shade of green. So this is how you can identify what page you're on. Let's check out the next section. At the top right of the screen, you'll see three buttons. The event details button contains all the detail information that you entered when you created a new event. You can edit here as well. So if you made a mistake entering the information when you created an event, there's really no need to delete and start again. You can simply enter into the event and change it by clicking this event details button. This is where you can adjust your markups inside of an individual event as well. Next to the event details button is the fee calculator button and the profit summary button. These buttons have very helpful tools once you click on them, and they have their own tutorials, so please be sure to watch those as well. If you're watching our Essential Tutorials playlist, they're going to play in order for you. Now let's move down to our column headers. This row, shaded in light green, contains the names of all of your recipes. I recommend naming them something that correlates to your invoice or proposal so that you'll remember the item easily when it's time for design production. On the reception page, we have three column headers. So this is representing three different recipes. One called seated cocktail tables, one called centerpieces, and one titled cake flowers. You might be wondering what the box above the column header with the letters QTY is for. This is where you'll enter the quantity of the designs for your recipe. For example, if we look at the centerpieces column header, you'll see that I have 10 here. This means that for this centerpiece design, I will make 10 centerpieces. Since there's one cake at this wedding, you can see that in the cake flowers, I only have a one in the QTY box. The number of bouquets, boutonnieres, centerpieces, and other designs are indicated by the number you enter in this QTY box. You'll want to make sure that this number matches your invoice or proposal for all your designs. I'll share more detail on this topic in the, the How to Build a recipe tutorial, so be sure to check that out soon. The next several lines are going to be your flowers, so let's scroll down just a little bit and look at those. As you see here, you can add flowers easily by clicking the Add Flower Action button at the top of the screen and selecting the flowers you'd like to add once you have some in your created in your library. When you place your mouse below the green column header row, you'll be able to scroll down like so. 
Below your flowers, you'll see a few rows that help you calculate your recipes and orders. You can also zoom out by using the command minus control um, keys. So if you do command and minus, you'll see that you'll be able to zoom out. And then if you click command and plus, you'll see that you'll be able to zoom in. And you can also click on the checkbox below the event details button that says compact display and hide labor fee. Using those checkboxes, you'll see that you'll be able to see more on the screen uh, at one time. So play with that and um, you'll be able to kind of adjust your um, layout and see more on the screen as well. Now let's take a look at the um, extended cost. So once you get down um, to the um, section of the financial information, the first line is extended cost. This is the row that shows the total dollars for each recipe at cost. So that's your wholesale price. The prices you input when you create each flower are added up here to calculate the extended cost of each recipe. Each column represents a recipe, and each recipe you create exists in its own vertical column. If you want to create one large order for your entire event, you could simply use one column and order all of your flowers. So check out how to build a recipe tutorial for more. Now let's look below the extended cost line at the labor fee line. This is a fee you can add as a percentage of your retail value. I've got a tutorial dedicated to the labor fee, how to calculate it, and how to adjust it for your business needs. So check that tutorial out if you have questions on labor fee. The next row is a supplies at retail value line item. Every stem is for flowers and recipe orders. But as a florist, I know you need to include the cost of mechanics into the total retail price of your design. This line item is the place for exactly that. If you have ribbon, tape, or um, items that you have in stock in your shop that you want to include, but you don't want to necessarily create a recipe item or an item in your library for it, you can include the cost of these in the retail price of your design. So you're going to put this at the retail price. So if it's a $5 glass vase that you're using and you don't necessarily want to create an item for it, you could put it in this line at $10. We do have a separate tutorial for that line as well, so check that out if you have any questions. Then the next row is retail value. And the retail value is calculated automatically. This is taking the extended cost, the, the price that you're paying for your wholesale flowers, and multiplying it by your markup, and adding your labor fee and supplies at retail value. In the arch example here, you'll see I've got a 30% labor fee and $60 worth of supplies at retail value for this wedding ceremony. For the arch, I'm gonna do $60 worth of chicken wire and moss at retail. And I've got a 30% labor fee for the um, time that I am spending to build this arch. The line directly below the retail value is called quoted price. This is the line where you will enter the price you are charging your client. So the quoted price is the price you are charging your client. You can decide what you want this price to be, but ideally, the retail value that's shown by every stem automatically in the line above is the amount that you want to charge at the very least. So the retail value needs to be equal or slightly less than your quoted price. Check out this example. The welcome sign extended cost is $22.87. With my labor fee and my supplies, the retail value comes to $99.17. This is based on the recipe that I've created above. I decided to charge the client $100, so this recipe is on point. I am achieving the profit margin and markup that I want to set for my business. The final row, the very last row, is called Difference. 
and that is the difference between your retail value and your quoted price. If this number is negative, it will be displayed here in a copper color. And basically, that means that um, you're over budget on that recipe. So you want to take a look at every recipe and see if it turns copper and it has a negative. You probably need to either charge your client more or you need to take something out of that recipe to get it within budget and have that difference line item turn from copper to black. I'll give you a quick example. Let's take another look at the welcome sign column. I'm going to add to my recipe. If I add three roses to this design, it increases my cost by an additional $4.47, and it increases my retail value by a total of $17.44, giving me a negative difference of $16.61. So I either need to increase the quoted price and charge my client $120 for this design to hit my financial goals, or I need to reconfigure the recipe to keep my retail value at or below my quoted price. So I would have to take a few other flowers away. If your retail value is equal to or less than your quoted price, you are within your budget and your profit margin is secure. If you see a negative number, that copper color in the difference line, that means you either need to revise your recipe or raise your quoted price, meaning charge your client more for that particular design. You want to keep your costs in line and achieve your profit goals, so make sure that you keep an eye on these and review them at the end of every um, session of working in every stem. That covers the event layout. Let me know if you have any questions, and please take a few minutes to create a new event, add some flowers, and give this system a test run. We know that if you embrace the change, that you can achieve great profit margins and make more money in your business. Watch the other tutorials and let us know if you need any help because we are here to help you learn quickly. So if you're not getting it or you have a, a question, please reach out.